Hello everybody, Manix here. Got another Knife versus video for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe at the little bell notification if you do not want to miss weekly knife and gun videos. Let's get right into this. This is going to be on the Cold Steel Voyager XL going head to head with the Cold Steel Espada large in G10. Different knives in a lot of ways, but actually not very different whatsoever. Uh, first appearances, if you're not too familiar with them, yeah, they might look almost like they're completely different, but when we get into the nitty gritties of them, they're actually pretty damn close. The biggest difference, obviously, is going to be this blade style. This is in the Tanto, as far as our Voyager XL is concerned, and we have this clip, some refer to it as a trailing point style blade, uh, but the Voyager line is offered in multiple blade styles. The Tanto, as you're seeing right here, the clip point, which is very, very similar to this guy right here. That's how it looks in comparison. I just don't have one on me. They also sell it in the drop point, as well as a Chris style blade, and then what they call the Vaquero, which is kind of like a really extreme modified Kukri. But obviously, closest style is gonna be the clip point. So there's two different ways you can look at this versus video. One, directly comparing this style blade to this specific Tanto style blade on the Voyager, or you can just imagine this is the clip point Voyager XL and compare it that way. I've owned that one before. If you want to compare the clip point style blade directly to this blade style on the Espada, it's very, very similar. It's just slightly less extreme. The grinds are a little bit different, but they're both clip blades. Personally, I like this one a little bit more on the Espada. It's just a little bit more extreme. It just looks a little bit cooler, but functionally, it's, it's almost the exact same thing. It's very, very close. It just happens to be an FFG. So let's just get the specs out of the way of these two. Now, they're both very, very long folders, but as you can probably see, the Espada on the bottom right here is just a a little bit longer. The Espada, according to Cold Steel's website, weighs 9.2 ounces, has a 3.7 millimeter thick blade. The blade length is 5.5 inches, AUS 10A blade steel, 6.75 inch G10 handle length. Its overall length is 12.25 inches. Stone wash finish, made in Taiwan. Triad locking mechanism, tip up carry. It comes with a second pocket clip, which is capable of being installed onto the left side of the knife. You just got to pop out these screws, use the second pocket clip it comes with, and swap it there. And then you just got to put this away somewhere. Thumb plate for deployment. It is waveable off of the pocket. Retails at $229.99, but in the aftermarket, generally I see these go for a little over $110, usually not too much more than $120 USD. The Voyager XL Tanto weighs 7.7 ounces, 4 millimeter thick blade, 5.5 inches in length, just like the Espada. Handle length 6.75 inches, making the overall length 12.25 inches. The handle material is Grivex with flush mounted aluminum liners. Also a triad lock, same exact pocket clip, also comes with a second one that can be installed on the left side. Thumb studs for deployment. Also a stonewash finish, also AUS 10A, also made in Taiwan. Retails at $119.99, but you can get these for around the $60 range, typically. So it's almost half the price of the Espada, and all of the materials are the same other than the G10 versus the Grivex. Blade steels are the same, finish is the same, they're made in the same location. According to their specs, I mean, it kind of contradicts what I just said earlier, but their specs are claiming they're the exact same length, but I can see with my eyeballs they're not. So you can tell that the Espada Large is slightly longer. Um, Cold Steel, hello, specs? Yeah, I'm matching these up pretty much perfectly. It's just a little bit longer on the Espada, just, just a little bit. The cutting edge lengths are pretty much spot on. Not really detecting much of a noticeable difference in that. It looks like its handle length is ever so slightly longer. That's where that extra length and size is coming from. Cold Steel might want to brush up on your specs. We're just going to say overall length on the Voyager is 12.25, and then the Espada 12. 0.3, somewhere around there. It's ever so slightly longer. It is heavier. Let's weigh them right now. Another thing Cold Steel specs usually are not right with are the weights, but a lot of knife manufacturers are not right about this either, in my experience. 9.38 ounces on our Espada Large, 7.92. 
So about an ounce and a half ish lighter on our Voyager. So again, elephant in the room. This guy's almost twice the price as this guy. They both have AUS 10A blade steels. They're both stone washed. They're both made in Taiwan. More or less, they're almost the exact same length. They both carry pretty much identically, as you can see right here. The big difference is just that G10 handle scales are what the Espada has. And then the Grivex plus flush mounted aluminum liners is what our Voyager is wearing. That's pretty much it. Other than that, it's just cosmetics. It's just slight variations in the ergonomics. The Espada is significantly more slim than the Voyager, as you can just see with your eyeballs right there. The overall profile is a little bit different. It's constructed a little bit differently. And then another big difference, thumb plate on our Espada, thumb studs on our Voyager. You can get the Voyager in the clip style blade or hell, even the drop point. Both of them will be very similar to this Espada. But another advantage you could give the Voyagers right off the bat is the variety in blade styles. Iron cross pattern on our Grivex for the Voyager, and then medium traction G10 pattern, I would say, on the Espada Large. Quite different from their previous models. When they made these back with the AUS-8 years ago, they used to have a much, much more aggressive G10. I think this was pre-GSM Outdoors days. The texturing Cold Steel used was really aggressive. I actually really loved it. The only downside was it softened pretty fast, so it didn't last very long. But that happens to all G10. Everything succumbs to entropy eventually. This is a very, very aggressive pattern on the Grivex as well, though. The Iron Cross. I'm going to say this is more aggressive and more grippy than the G10. Although it is... Don't be fooled, though. If you're familiar with G10 and Grivex, FRN, GFM, whatever you want to call this crap, the texturing is always much, much different. It might not look like much, but this is actually, despite it being less aggressive, my thumb feels like it'll stay stuck onto the scales about as the same as this grip that's more aggressive on the FRN. It's just a lot easier to texture G10. However, the big advantage to Grivex or FRN, Grivery, is that you can kind of do whatever the hell you want with it. You can make up any pattern you feel like, write or draw anything you want in there, mold it however you want. It's very easy to work with, very affordable, very easy to texture. You can make very complicated, weird-ass patterns in it very, very easily. It's a lot more difficult to do that with G10. Nice and rounded and all of the edges right here, even around the lock bar. I like that. Very, very comfortable, very smooth, very, very ergonomic. Also rounded on our Spada, not quite as much, but it is a completely different handle material, so they kind of did what they could. Not quite as rounded as that guy, though. They're both triad locks. All you can see, the lock bar on the Voyager on the right is slightly longer than the Espada Large, meaning it's technically weaker if you increase a lock bar but do not increase the torsion bar for said lock bar. That means that the longer lock bar is actually going to be slightly weaker than the shorter one. I have a video on how that works. It's very, very simple stuff, but as far as I know, they use the exact same torsion bars on pretty much all of their knives across the board that use that triad lock. But it's an extremely strong locking mechanism nonetheless. And me comparing the two and saying one's weaker than the other, it's it's kind of BS. Yeah, it's a technicality, but practically speaking, you're not going to notice a difference, I promise you. These triad locks are almost invincible. They're very, very, very strong, strong, overpowered locking mechanism. So I am not concerned whatsoever. As far as strength is concerned, I take these over any other locking mechanism I can think of on the market, period. These are the strongest locking mechanisms out there for production folders so they're both super strong in length our espada wins is just slightly longer not according to their specs online but from visual you can just see the handles just a little bit just a little bit longer so we win in length technically on our espada we're also going to win with speed because it is waveable off the pocket i do actually really like those thumb plates texturing on them is just fine but you can wave these off of your pocket you cannot wave these voyagers off of your pocket at least unless you mod it yourself i've seen people crank these thumb studs out and stick a zip tie or something on there and wave it that way. Yeah, sure, but we're not talking mods. We're talking straight out of the factory, straight out of the box. What are you getting? So speed and length are a spot of wins. However, this guy's about an ounce and a half lighter. Grivex is just a lot lighter than G10 as it is, even with those aluminum liners in there. Not steel, they're aluminum. Yeah, they're going to be a little bit weaker than steel liners, but oftentimes steel liners usually aren't even all that necessary to begin with. I think it was kind of a smart move for Cold Steel to go with these aluminum ones significantly lighter and we don't lose 
probably any strength for this style knife right here. There's no flex, almost none. It's very, very durable. They're not skeletonized, but I don't think it's necessary. So for weight, we win on the Voyager. It's lighter weight. It's going to be easier to carry. Ergonomics, big old choil right here. I like how it's rounded. I like the lines to it. I like the cutouts. Very, very comfortable. You can scooch down here. I like going down into this grip. You have even more reach that way. It's kind of our battle grip or whatever you want to call that. You can scooch up here. Use this portion of the bolster area to choke up on if you want to do more precision style work with such a beast. Same thing with this guy. It's almost the exact same profile. We have two big old choils that are a little bit more extreme than our Voyagers right here. We don't have a ramp or anything up here neither of them do you can choke up here in the bolster area just like the voyager you can scooch all the way down here if you wish to get that maximum reach just like the voyager can so although the ergonomics are a little bit different a little bit more extreme on the espada right here uh, more or less they're about the same very similar profile very similar choices of grips you have on them a little bit more rounded and slim on our espada more blocky and squared off on our voyager but they're they're pretty close honestly i want to say the espada is a little bit more comfortable just because i like these wider deeper choils these are a little bit more shallow but that also means the voyager is going to be less extreme it's more versatile you can hold this in more positions without it feeling terribly uncomfortable to you as well however in whatever grip you do pick with the spot of more or less it probably will be more comfortable on locking just a little bit more however it's more slim and honestly i like fatter thicker handles for ergonomics when it comes to knives because they're more hand filling my hands my fingers my skin literally has more to grip onto one i just think that's more comfortable but two it's less likely to fly out of your hands you literally have a stronger grip on it unless it's too wide of course but that's a lot more rare than a knife that's too slim i think this spot is very very slim so it'll carry nicer in the pocket but there's literally less that you can grip onto. I kind of wish I had just a little bit more. I still really like it, it's still very comfortable, but just kind of how physics works when it's thin like that, you're gonna be feeling more hot spots if you grip the same way you would on a knife with a thicker handle. Personally, I don't think there's a winner as far as ergos are concerned. I like the beefy chunkiness to the Voyagers. I actually really like thick, chunky handles. They're, they're objectively just more hand filling and I find that more comfortable personally for my hands, but this guy's got deeper choils, so I'm, I'm not gonna give an ergonomics point to either of them. They're both equally good just in their different ways. Carryability, I'm also not going to give a point to either one because, again, our Voyager, although is lighter, it is thicker and this more aggressive material is a little bit more raw on your skin. If It's going to be slightly uncomfortable and it's going to be taking up more space. However, this guy's heavier. So I'm not going to give it a point either. Neither of them are better for carry unless you're backpacking or something with these things. Then, yeah, the light one's going to win. But this texture sucks on the pocket, though, when it comes to using the pocket clip. I will give it that. The Espada G10 is just a lot more smooth unless you get a really aggressive G10. But just this pattern is less aggressive on the pocket. This one's going to shred it up. You may want to sand underneath that if you're afraid of it being too aggressive. But the advantage to a very grippy texture like this on your pocket is that it's less likely to fall out of your pocket so it depends on how you look at it i suppose price well let's just recap really quick the spada is slightly longer it's faster because it's waveable off of the pocket and it's more slim g10 handle scales feel a little bit more smooth a little bit nicer to the touch i suppose the voyager is thicker you can see that as an advantage or a disadvantage with a much more aggressive texturing on here Again, you could see that as an advantage or disadvantage. You could argue it's slower because out of the box, it's not waveable off of the pocket because we have thumb studs instead of a thumb plate. It is lighter by over an ounce, so it will weigh you down less. The blade seals are the same. The finishes on the blade seals are the same. The pocket clips are the same. They're going to be showing pretty much exactly as much out of the pocket when you carry them. But the really, really big advantage we have on the Voyager line, doesn't matter what blade style you go with, these are a lot cheaper than the Aspire. Again, on average, these guys are about 60. On average, these Espadas are maybe about 115 as I'm filming this late 2023. So we're saving a good 50 bucks on these Voyagers. Now, granted, if you go with the Chris style blade, they charge a little bit more for those. But the clip, the drop, the tanto, as far as I know, are around 60, if not slightly less than $60. They both have the same locking mechanisms. They're pretty much just as strong as each other. It all just kind of comes down to preference and looks. Personally, I think the Espada looks a little cooler. I like the more organic, kind of sexy like, tail we have going on here. These really deep choils, and it's very, very cool. But ergonomically, more or less, they're about the same. The overall profile of it's very similar, but, and I do like how the 
the Voiders are thicker. I like thicker knives, honestly. It's just kind of contradictory and funny to me and ironic that this is thicker but lighter, thinner but heavier on the Espada. So who's the winner here? As much as I hate to admit it, the Voyager. I'm going to say objectively it's just a better knife. If you're just talking bang for your buck, if you're talking the value, how much you're getting for your money, you're really not getting much more for your money if you get the Espada over particularly the clip style Voyager XL. But it doesn't matter what blade style you go with. If that's your preference, that's your preference. It's still going to be cheaper than this. You're still going to get the same blade steel. It's still going to be the same finish. But I do like the slimness of the Espadas. I do really like the way these look. I like how these are waveable. If you absolutely must go with a waveable knife, you will not go with one with thumb studs. You need that thumb plate. You just need it. Then yeah, it's it's worth upgrading to the Espada, I suppose. There's a reason I got this one. I really, really like it. I think it's cool. More simple, a little bit more elegant looking. Just as effective as a Voyager. Arguably faster and better because it's waveable. But at the end of the day, more or less, they'll still be able to get the same jobs done. We don't have any significant differences here. They're pretty much going to perform just as well as the other one, minus a couple of little differences here and there. So both really awesome knives, but our Voyager is it's just cheaper and you're getting the same knife pretty much. I wonder if it's just this G10. I think the G10 that Colt still throws on their knives it costs a lot more. I, I don't know what it is, but that's a pattern I've been noticing for the last decade looking at Cold Steel knives. If they got G10 on there, it's going to be up there in price, but you save a crap ton if they throw the Grivex. And honestly, as far as strength is concerned, it, it, it doesn't really matter at all. That's it. That's our Spot of Large versus the Voyager XL. Let me know if I missed anything. Did I give an unfair video here? Are there advantages I completely missed about the Espada? Is there anything else you like about the Espada over the Voyager? Is there anything you dislike more about the Voyager that I missed? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Manix out.